you know, we, we were scheduled to actually eliminate all remaining old growth forests in this region by about 2020. Uh, fortunately, in the 1980s and 90s, uh, significant actions were taken to back off uh, on the amount of logging. And I'd like to just quickly show you some of these impacts. Uh, one, one really interesting and amazing one is this shot uh, out on the Umatilla National Forest. And if you look, well, here you can kind of see it. But notice that ribbon of silver going down that valley. That's, I carefully had the pilot position the aircraft so I could get the sunlight to reflect off the water uh, in that creek valley. So this, in the fall, because you've got the bright yellow fall color of the larch, taken in September, <clears throat> still plenty of water in the stream, the stream being one of the headwater branches of the Soton Creek, with a number of threatened and, and of of threatened species of anatomous fish in it. Yet, clear cut right to the edge of the stream, slash burned over the entire area uh, on the Umatilla National Forest. Actually, this one, we came dangerously close to publishing this in some way, side by side with the district manager and forest supervisor's pictures of the people responsible for doing this. In fact, I had a very interesting discussion with uh, a senator's staff over this picture, because when I showed it to them, they looked at it and just shook their heads and said, they never do that kind of thing on national forests, do they? Sorry. The problem is that when, I was, when I'm doing this photo documentation, I've had, in this particular stage, I actually had my camera hooked up to a computer that logged each picture, and I have the GPS coordinates in an Excel database for where this picture was taken and what direction I was looking. So I could put a dot on the map where the plane was and an arrow showing where this picture was taken. It makes it kind of hard to say it wasn't deep within a national forest. Of course, all that logging uh, accelerates runoff. This is the 96 flood uh, down at the confluence of the Willamette and the Sandy Am. Uh, landscape architects skillfully uh, plan these clear cuts so that as you drive the Highway 26 east of Mount Hood, you don't see anything. Just this, you're driving through this magnificent continuous forest. You know, we were intensively logging this over many decades uh, when private land cutting had to back off in the 70s because they were running out. National forest logging ramped up. Uh, and here we have big old growth Douglas fir falling into a clear cut. I mean, these are huge trees. Look at the side of the tree and these people. I don't have time here, but have had some amazing conversation with loggers uh, over uh, logging these trees. But uh, Sam here, for example, really uh, sees an appropriate end to old growth logging at the point I talked to him during this uh, logging work and um, also took it as a sacred trust and was phenomenally skillful in how he made sure that every one of those trees could land and not be broken up and be all good usable wood. But for many decades, you know, we've eliminated old growth forests and worked to convert them to uh, tree plantations. Uh, this is a 40-year-old tree plantation around a Douglas fir stump. Of course, the biodiversity and magnificent complexity of an old growth forest are no longer here. This is actually a second generation clear cut. Here's the big old initial stump. Uh, here's a, a log or a stump that was cut uh, after about 100, just a little over 100 years of growth. And then here's the new uh, seedling that's planted. So we've worked very hard to create plantations instead of the structural and biological and genetic uh, diversity and complexity of our old growth forests. Fortunately, we have at least made significant progress toward appropriately husbanding and conserving uh, that resource. Here's a more than 20 year old clear cut on a ridge near the Opal Creek area. Uh, at higher elevations like 4,000 feet, cuts don't grow back well. Here's central Idaho uh, cuts. Uh, that basically, in a decade period, produced 
several 20-year floods, a 50-year flood, and a 100-year flood. We mess up the hydrology when we clear-cut uh, too extensively. We've clear-cut the boundaries of major natural areas like Mount Rainier National Park. And actually, because of that, even though this area is extensively clear-cut, this is old growth forest reserve under the Northwest Forest Plan in an attempt to promote old growth forest development in, a here, in an area here adjoining Mount Rainier National Park. By opening up the forest with clear cuts, we, this clear cut opened the forest to a major wind event and the wind easily blew all these trees next to this ridge over. And you know, here's a, a tree clutching a boulder as it went over. One of the challenges we have, of course, is we keep trying to get a lot of wood out of our forests, but as we go to higher and higher elevations, the trees are much smaller in diameter and much shorter. The volume of trees per acre is tiny, and so to keep the same amount of log coming out of our forests, we have to log incredibly higher acreages. That's a little hidden dimension of trying to maintain the cut. Uh, some more high elevation cuts, and... This is the Pistol River in southwestern Oregon. This is actually the state mandated tree protection buffer <laughs> from these, these private cuts, pretty minimal. Uh, here is a piece of the Shelton Sustained Yield Unit up next to Olympic National Park. Uh, this area was actually logged back in the 1960s. The site was treated so harshly that the mycorrhizal fungi were all killed off. It's a bacterial dominated soil and you can't get trees to grow here anymore. And here's some more of that kind of thing. And there's Mount Rainier National, check it, the Olympic National Park beyond it. Up in Alaska, giant Sitka spruce in places worthy, and this is a, a student's um, photograph, uh, places worthy of national park type status, clear cut. Chris Mazur had a marvelous way of defining our IQ in relation to these kinds of things. Uh, we've solved a fair number of problems with science, but we create even more with our technology and with our political and economic systems. And the difference between those we've solved and the huge array of problems we've created is our IQ. And if you've read ahead, basically in this case, IQ doesn't mean intelligence, it means ignorance quotient. Uh, Jerry Franklin pioneered a system of logging that leaves more natural forest features behind, including down logs, as opposed to this 800-year-old stump and a classic hard burn clear cut in the 70s. We've logged the edges of wilderness areas. You can literally define their, their areas uh, from, the, from the air. Uh, the survival uh, of Juvenile spotted owls is very, very minimal. There's really no place uh, to speak of to call home. Uh, we do have some significant areas protected. This is a trail that I teach from at Opal Creek. Uh, here's some mid-successional forest at Opal Creek. Uh, a last look at a natural forested uh, watershed. That is, I think, enough.